Patrick was a gentleman, he came from decent people. He built a church in Dublin town and on it put a steeple. His father was a Gallagher, his mother was a Brady. His aunt was an O'Shaughnessy, his uncle was a Grady. The Wicklow hills are very high and so's the hill of both, sir. But there's a hill much higher still, much higher than them both, sir. And on the top of that high hill, St. Patrick preached his sermon, which drove the frogs into the bogs and banished all the vermin. There's not a mile in Aaron's Isle where dirty vermin musters, but there he put his dear forefoot and murdered them in clusters. Toads went pop, the frogs went hop, slap dash into the water. Snakes committed suicide to save themselves from slaughter. Nine hundred thousand reptiles blew, he charmed with sweet discourses. Dined on them in Killaloo, on soups and second courses. Blind worms crawling in the grass, disgusted all the nation. Right down to hell with a holy spell, he changed their situation. No wonder that them Irish lads to be so gay and frisky. Sure, old Patrick taught them that, as well as making whiskey. No wonder that the saint himself should understand distilling. His mother kept a shebeen shop in the town of Enniskillen. Was I but so fortunate as to be back in Munster? I'd be bound that from that ground I never more would once stir. There St. Patrick planted turf and cabbages and praties. Pigs galore, macaw, mustor, altar boys and ladies. Welcome to Folk and Trad, a program that concentrates on the folk and traditional music here in Thurston County. And this time, coming up St. Patrick's Month, we're going to go green. They, uh, there's a lot of good Irish groups here in Thurston County, and we're going to bring you one of them today called Cricket on the Hearth. Last fall, TCTV uh, remodeled and reopened, uh, and at that time they asked Cricket on the Hearth to come and play for the reopening. So they've generously allowed us to use some of the uh, video from that opening to help us celebrate St. Patrick's Month. So here is Cricket on the Hearth. Keep your eyes well peeled today, the excisemen are on their way, searching for the mountain tail, the hills of Connemara. Gather with the pots and the old tin pans, the mash, the corn, the barley and the bread, run like the devil from the exciseman, get the smoke from rising barley. Mountain breezes as they blow, hear their echo in the glen below, county men they're on the go in the hills of Connemara. Gather up the pots and the old tin pans, the mash, the corn, the barley, and the bran. Run like the devil from the excise man, keep the smoke from rising barley. Well, a bottle for the preacher of Port Tor Tom, a bottle for poor old Bob and John. Had this prash and him so long, and the hymns of Connemara. Gather up the pots and the old tin pans, the mash, the corn, the barley, and the bran. Run like the devil from the excise man, keep the smoke from rising barley. Well, stand your ground, boys, it's too late. The excise men are at the gate. Glory be to God that they're drinking it straight in the hills of Connemara. Gather up the pots and the old tin pans, the mash, the corn, the barley, and the bran. Run like the devil from the excise man, keep the smoke from rising barley. Swing to the left, then you swing to the right. The excise men will dance all night. Breaking up the tag till the broad daylight. The males of Connemara. Gather up the pots and the old tin pans. The mash, the corn, the barley, and the bran. Run like the devil from the excise man. Keep the smoke from rising barley. <laughs> Thank you. We are Cricket on the Hearth. Anyway, in Ireland, they had a terrible windstorm come down, and so uh, Murphy, my good friend, he said, uh, his neighbor called him, and he says, well, how did you do last night, Murph? And Murph says, well, except for one of my hens got out. He said, but it turned out okay. He says, she just turned her back to that wind, but she did lay the same egg five times. That's, that's a strong, strong wind. Oh, yes. 
This is a little song called I'll Tell Me Ma When I Get Home. The boys won't leave the girls alone. One knows uh, that the Irish have a, a great uh, uh, love of uh, uh, gambling and horse racing in particular, and uh, this particular horse race involved a donkey. And so this is the, the story of uh, Delaney's donkey. So are you ready, boys? We're ready. Okay. All right. Delaney had a donkey that everyone admired Temporarily lazy and permanently tired A leg at every corner balancing his head And a tail to let you know which end he wanted to be fed Riley slyly said we'd underrated it Why not train it? Then he took a rag They rubbed it, scrubbed it, oiled it, and brocaded it Got it to the poster when the starter dropped his flag There was Riley pushing it, shoving it, and shushing it Hogan Logan and everyone in town Lined up attacking it, shoving it and smacking it They might as well have tried to push the town hall down The donkey was eyeing them, openly defying them Winking, blinking, twisting out to place Riley reversing it, everybody cursing it The day the lazy donkey ran the half mile race Now 
the muscles of the mighty, never known to flinch. They couldn't budge the donkey a quarter of an inch. Delaney lay exhausted, hanging round his throat, with a grip just like a Scotsman on a five-pound note. Starter Carter lined up with the rest of them. When it saw them, it was willing then. It raced up, raced up, ready for the best of them. The crowd began to cheer it, then it changed its mind again. And there was Riley pushing it, shoving it, shushing it, Hogan, Logan, and Marianne McGraw. She started poking it, grabbing it, and choking it. It kicked her in the bustle and it laughed, hee haw. The Whigs and Conservatives, the Radicals, Superlatives, the Liberals, Tories, they hurried to the place. Stood there in unity, helping the community. The day the ladies don't care at the half mile race. Now the crowd began to cheer. Then Rafferty, the judge, he came to assist them, but still it wouldn't budge. The jockey who was riding, little John McGee, got so thoroughly disgusted that he went to have his tea. Pagan, pagan, with students of psychology, swore they shifted with some dynamite. They bought it, brought it, then without apology, the donkey gave a sneeze and flew the whole lot out of sight. There was Riley pushing it, shoving it, shushing it, Hogan, Logan, and all the valley crew. Police and artillery, the garrison artillery, the second and the skeletons and the lifeguards too. They seized it and harried it, they picked it up and carried it, cheered it, steered it to the winning place. Then the bookies drew aside, they all committed suicide. The day the lady donkey won the half mile race. Yes, the day the lady donkey won the half mile race. <laughs> Thank you. All right, this song is called Do You Love an Apple? And it's an Irish ballad. Do you love an apple? Do you love a pear? Do you love a laddie with bonny brown hair? And still I love him, I can't deny it.
still I love him, I can't deny him. I'll be with him wherever he goes. Ah. Nice to Well, we usually try to include songs in the set that are educational as well as uh, <coughs> entertainment. And uh, this next one, uh, a lot of folks have uh, heard the song Ghost Riders in the Sky. Do you remember that one from back in uh, the late 40s? Oh, yeah. Vaughn Monroe sang it. What people may not realize is that that's a very old song, an old Irish song that Vaughn Monroe changed just a bit. Well, we did some research and went back and found the original which was not ghost riders in the sky, it was goat riders in the sky. And we're prepared to do that for you today. It's wonderful to have a researcher in the family. <laughs> An Irish lad went riding out one dark and dreary day. Oh, up on the moors he rested as he went along his way. Oh, and all at once a mighty herd of smelly goats he saw. Plowing through the ragged sky and up the cloudy draw. Aaron go brown, Aaron go gray, hey, 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 hey. Go burn in the sky. Their faces red and haggard. And their eyes bloodshot as well. Ooh, ha, hey. Their horns are drooping to the ground, their foul breath he could smell. Ooh, yuck. Ha, hey. A bolt of fear went through him as they stumbled through the sky, for he saw the leprechauns are coming. I see him. He's here to come. And he heard their mournful cry. <laughs> Faces got their eyes are blurred, shirts all soaked with sweat. Ooh, hey. They're riding off to somewhere, but they ain't got there yet. No, not yet. For they've got to ride forever off that moors up in the sky. It's a silly thing to do. <laughs> when you ask, they don't know why. Have I got a clue? Leprechauns came riding by, he heard one call his name. Hey, Murphy! You think you're going crazy, lad, you're just yourself to blame. Nobody else. So get on back to Dublin, or where here you call your home. Or you'll spend all eternity, at least a long, long time, <laughs> up on that Blarney stone. Classics for you. But, uh, oh, I, Murphy, I, I forgot to tell you, uh, Murphy said the other. Uh, Murphy got a call from his friend Finnegan. Murphy had opened up the paper that morning, and in the obituaries, 
He read his own name. Well, you know, if you can read your own name in the obituaries, you're, you shouldn't be there yet. So uh, he says to Finnegan, he says, Finnegan, did you read the obituaries this morning? Uh, Finnegan says, oh, that I did, that I did. He says, and did you see me? Uh, he says, yeah, I, I saw. He says, uh, by the way, he says, where are you calling from? From Jim. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> sleep in peace until you come to me. Oh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our good friend, Patrick Hill, who for many years uh, worked uh, for Evergreen State College, uh, when Patrick was growing up in New York in an Irish family, the family belonged to an, uh, an abstinence organization called the Pioneers. And this abstinence organization was also very prominent in Ireland. And uh, Patrick thought it was somewhat unfair, the reputation that the Irish sometimes seemed to have foisted upon them for a love of the drink. And he thought their other, uh, their other ethnic 
uh, cultures in Europe that might drink more than the Irish. And so he delved into the rich collection of Irish songs, folk songs, to find the anti-drinking songs. And he <clears throat> pulled out a set, and put a few poems with them. He made the following set we're going to do for you. The odd thing is, these anti-drinking songs that uh, Irish uh, that Patrick put in here are usually always sung with a pint in your hand. Aye. <laughs> Whiskey, whiskey, Nancy, whiskey, 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 Nancy, oh. As I went down to Glasgow City, Nancy, whiskey, a chance to smell. I went in, sat down beside her, seven long years, I loved her. Whiskey, whiskey, Nancy, whiskey, 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 Nancy, oh. I acquired my taste for whiskey at the tender age of ten. Now it's ten times, ten times a day that I wish I were nine again. Ah, oh, whiskey, you're the devil, you're leading me astray. Over hills and mountains and to America. You're sweeter, stronger, decenter, you're spunkier than Tay. Oh, whiskey, are me darling, drunk or sober. Twas the pig fair last September, a day I well remember. I was struck up and down in drunken pride. My knees began to flutter as I slid down in the gutter, and a pig come up and laid down by me side. As I lie there in the gutter, thinking thoughts I could not utter, I thought I heard a passing lady say, You may tell someone who boozes by the company he chooses. And with that, the pig got up and walked away. <laughs> I've been a wild rover for many a year And I've spent all my money on whiskey and beer But now I'm returning with gold and great store that God sent to guard me is named Gwyneth. Gwyneth. After two points of Guinness, I could not pronounce her name. Gwyneth. Might we consider, I pray, an exchange, mm -hmm. a Catherine or a Michael would do. But God frowned upon this cosmic shuffling and offered at most a stew. Huh, I feel downright deflated to be guarded by an angel named Stew. So I'll stick with God's choice of Gwyneth and I'll limit me Guinness to two. I'll go back to me parents, confess what I've done, and ask them to pardon their prodigal son. And if they caress me as oft times before, then I never will play the wire over no more. And, and it's no name. Whiskey, whiskey, Nancy, whiskey. Whiskey, whiskey, Nancy, oh. Oh, thank you. Let's see, you're going to dance one, Deb? Um, okay. All right, yeah. All right. If we got a little room out front here, uh, Dr. <coughs> Fiddler can also do a uh, shake a fine leg. Hi, and hi. So uh, we're going to play a, a short reel for you. And uh, Deb will do a little dance. So this okay. is called um, Irish Step Dancing. <laughs> <laughs> 
and usually it's done um, by young boys and girls in Ireland. They first learn how to use something called a soft shoe. And um, the first step is called seven. So this is what you would see little kids doing when they first learn how to do their, their steps. Concert are real. Well, we got a couple more, and one of them is a song written by a fellow here in Olympia, Steve mm -hmm. Kelso. Just yeah, Sing Steve us about Kelso the benefits. Uh, wrote this song a number of years ago, uh, according to the folklore surrounding this song. Um, uh, uh, Steve, at one time, owned uh, an old uh, Victorian style uh, house uh, down near the state capitol that was, um, had been converted into a couple of apartment units. And they, the apartments were rented by uh, young women who uh, worked uh, for the state agencies nearby. And, uh, you know, they weren't very expensive places, and, and uh, the, it was kind of old. And uh, these gals, uh, uh, one of them in particular, was after Steve to uh, convert the old clawfoot bathtub in the bathroom into uh, a shower. She wanted to be able to take a shower. And well, uh, Steve looked into the expense and the rent just didn't justify the expense of uh, the conversion. So he uh, wrote this song to try and convince her of the virtues of a hot bath. Now. Me, I made some millions and I lost a few. I've been on Easy Street and on the Skid Road too. I've tasted all the pleasures on the Primrose Path, but I never found a thing to beat a good hot bath. First you turn on the tap and then you lay right back and then you slip. Oh yeah, slip right in. Feels so good, you can't believe it. Ain't a sin, but it's a Caribbean cruises and your Cadillac car. I don't want to lounge around in your exclusive club. I'd rather have an hour in a good hot tub. Where'd you turn on the tap and then you take right back and then you slip. Oh yeah, slip right in. Feels so good, you can't believe it. Ain't a sin, but it's a That I know of It has no dangerous Awful side effects Like falling in love Cheaper than booze It's impossible to steal The hot bath Has got to be The world best deal First you turn on The tap And then you lay Right back And then you slip Oh yeah Slip right in Feels so good You can't believe it Ain't a sin But it's a Oh, a hot bath. I never found a thing to beat a good hot bath. 
a straight and narrow path If I thought that it would lead me to a good hot path Weren't you turn on the tap and then you lay Right back and then you slip, oh yeah Right in, feels so good you can't believe it It ain't a sin, but it's a... This is a story about Tim Finnegan. And Tim Finnegan was a hod carrier who fell off of a ladder. Uh, I can relate to that. I fell off a ladder this week myself, but I survived it. Tim didn't. He fell and he broke his neck. But in Ireland, they hold a wake for the departed party. But the wake for Tim Finnegan was so good that Tim didn't want to miss it. This is Tim Finnegan's wake. Tim! Finnegan lived in Walking Street, a gentleman Irish, mighty yard. He ate a beautiful broke, so rich and sweet. To rise in the world, he carried a heart. You see, he'd sort of a devil in the way with the love for the liquor port. Tim was born to help him on with his work each day. He'd drop with the grayler every morning. Whack for the down, now dance to your partner. Well, the floor your trotters shake. Wasn't it the truth? I told you lots of fun at Finnegan's wake. What more? Tim felt rather full. His head was heavy, it made him shake. Fell from a ladder and he broke his skull. Carried him home, his corpse to wait. Drowned him up in an ice cream sheet and laid him out upon the bed with a gallon of whiskey at his feet. A barrel of porter at his head. Whack the lid down, now dance to your partner. Well, the floor your covers shake. Wasn't it the truth? I told you lots of fun at Finnegan's wake. Assembled at the wake, Mrs. Finnegan called for lunch. lunch. First she brought the tea, the cake, the pipes, the mac, and the whiskey punch. Vinny O'Brien began to cry. Such a nice plate corpse did you ever see? Tim, my born, and why did you die? Gotta hold your cup, said Patty McGee. Whack, Whack the lid down, now dance to your partner. Well, the floor your trotters shake. Wasn't it the truth? I told you lots of fun at Finnegan's wake. Then Maggie O'Connor took up the job. Biddy says she are wrong, I'm sure. Biddy gave her a belt of the gun, and left her sprung and on the floor. Then the war did soon engage, was woman to woman and man to man. She lately law was all the rage, and around one eruption soon began. Whack for the down, now can't see a heart there, let the floor your trotters shake. Wasn't it the truth I told you, lots of fun at a Finnegan's way. Stand landing on the bed, liquor scattered over Tim. Tim realizing see how he rises, Tim the rises, rises from the bed. Said, Put your whiskey around my blazes. Son of a deal, do you think I am dead? Hey, whack the down, 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 down,